How do I create a logger in Jenkins for troubleshooting and diagnostic information? Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.440.1. I've also got a sample job that we'll take a look at in just a few moments. Now, what do you need to do if you need to turn on some extra logging in your controller to be able to trace some problems for either troubleshooting or diagnostics? There's a CloudBees knowledge base article that walks you through how to do that. The link to this knowledge base article is down in the description. So how do I create the logger? Well, there's two different ways you can do it. We're gonna do it through the UI, but you can also do it through the file system. Again, we're only gonna focus on the UI section. So what we'll do is we'll go under Manage Jenkins and we'll go to the system logs and we'll add a new log recorder. So let's see how that looks right now. We'll go over to our controller, Manage Jenkins. We'll scroll down to system log and we can see here all the Jenkins logs. That's a link here. So if we click into this, the logs that we'll see are the items that are logged within our Jenkins controller. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and create a new logger, what we'll do is we'll click back on system log. We'll click on add recorder. Now, in this case, we just give it a name. This is just a normal name. So in my case, I'm going to give it a name of trigger-logger. We'll click on create, and then we can configure the log recorder. But before we do that, let's go ahead and click on trigger logger. Notice how it shows up in the URL. Notice it's all lowercase and I had a dash in my logger. So for my names, I like making it all lowercase with dashes so that my URL stays clean within my controller. Notice here that it says there's no logs available. Well, we haven't configured it yet. So we can configure it now. And that takes us back to the same page. Now, one more way we can take a look at this. If we go ahead and click on system log, that takes us all the way back up to the top of our log recorders. We can see that we cannot configure the all Jenkins logs, but we have a gear here besides trigger logger. We click on that and that takes us back to the configuration. So we could get to the configuration one of two ways. We can click on system log, click on the gear beside the logger that we want, or we can click on system log, click into the logger that we want, and then click on configure. Now, what loggers do we need to add? Well, let's click into add right below the name and we can start typing in logger. So I can say com and it gives me a list of different loggers that I could select, or I could type org, and there's other loggers that I could select. So before you start adding the logger that you need, you need to go and research where the loggers are that you want to use. Now, for my example, we're gonna be taking a look at triggers. Let's go ahead and, go ahead and take a look at my job that's running right now. So if we leave this page, go back to our job, what I have is I have a cron job. If I take a look at the configuration, what's happening is I have a job that's running every minute. Now, if I was to take a look at the logs right now, there's not gonna be much information about this job. I want to know more about what's happening within my triggers. So after doing some digging, I found within Jenkins core where my information for triggers are. So if I look within triggers and I search for logger, what I'm going to see is there are a few loggers that have more granularity than just info. Notice I have a finer here and I also have just a log level warning, so that's okay. I have also a warning there. Again, there's a fine, there's a warning. Here's a fine. So what I want to do is I want to capture all the information coming from this class, the Hudson Triggers Trigger class, and give it all the information I can. Well, let's go ahead and go back over into our configuration for our logger. And what we'll do is we are going to look at the different options that we have for this class. So we'll go ahead and go down to System Log. We'll go into Trigger Logger, click on Configure, we want to add. Now, what do we want to add? Well, we want to add the class name of where the logger is that we want. In this case, that's going to be Hudson Triggers Trigger. So let's go ahead and go back over into our configuration. I'll type Hudson Triggers, and then I'll find Trigger. Now, you can't use your arrow keys to navigate this, but you have to select it using your mouse. So let's go ahead and select Trigger. Now, I could add more loggers. I could add a second one if I wanted to, but in my case, I want to add just this one logger. Now for log level, I can choose all, which would give me everything. That gives me every possible combination of logs. Or I could just turn it off if I was getting too many logs for whatever reason. So sometimes in troubleshooting, you might want to set up a logger and give it an all or a finer or a finest, whatever the case may be, depending on how the log level is set. But there may be other cases to where you're getting too much information in your logs and you just want to ignore it. That's another use case for setting up a custom logger. In my case, I want to go ahead and use all and click on save. Now remember that my job is running once every minute. So I'll have to wait up to a minute to start seeing logs show up on this page. So a minute's passed and I can see that I've got logs coming into this custom logger. I can see that I was in the do run step, check triggers, and then I'm seeing 
Also, the log levels, finer, finer, fine, and also config. So this is giving me a lot more information about what's happening within my triggers. What you'll want to do if you're trying to debug something is you'll have to go in, figure out where the log line is, and then set the appropriate log level that you want to capture. Now, you'll also notice that over time, this log can become longer and longer and longer. Maybe you don't need it all the time. But one thing you can do is go ahead and clear this log. I'll go ahead and clear the log completely out. And then when the job runs again, it will start filling up the log again. Now, let's assume for a moment that we are done with our diagnostics. Should we leave this logger running all the time? Let's go ahead and go back over to the Knowledge Base article and see what it says. What we can see here in this important section, it is recommended that you remove any log recorders you've added once they are no longer needed. So I've gone in, I've done all my logging around triggers, I'm happy, everything's looking the way I expect it to be. Maybe that wasn't my problem, maybe it was, doesn't matter, I'm done with it. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and delete that custom log recorder that I had set up. Now you might think, okay, let's go back over to configuration and see what it looks like. Well, if I click on configure, I don't see a delete anywhere. So if you need to delete a custom logger, what you'll do is go over to the three dots, click on that, and you'll notice at the bottom, there's a delete log recorder. So we'll go ahead and click on delete log recorder. It gives me a modal to decide, do you really want to do this? The answer is yes. And then we'll end back up on the base system log page. And you can see that the custom log recorder that we created is now gone. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.